Hello and welcome. My name is Jürgen Resch and I want to show you how automated HMI generation could look like for a substation HMI system. But first a little bit of an introduction. When we talk about uh, substation HMI we today have to do these HMI projects manually. But uh, what we actually want is that we don't want to do anything manually. We want to have that automized. There were some tries uh, to use an SSD file based on IEC 61850 SCL and use this type of file, put it into a tool and generate the single line diagram for the HMI. But uh, actually there is some data missing. We understood that the SSD is missing some very important data. For instance, um, data that is only available in the so-called ID section and not in the substation section. But still then uh, we need some more information because um, variable names, for instance, uh, shall not be the object reference of IEC 61850 and also usability of the HMI project is different. Some like it in this way, some like it the other way. That's the reason why we need something what we call a template project. So in detail the process which we found out which fits best looks like this. So we are using Xenon and as a system configuration tool we are using Helix. What we want to have is this substation HMI, which uh, is actually the Xenon runtime. We need a Xenon editor to load a project into the Xenon runtime. But this project needs to be configured. So first of all, what we learn learned in the previous slide, we want to have this template project, which uh, provides us the usability of the project. Then we generate the dynamic content if you want because every substation is different so that's the dynamic content that is generated automatically with a so-called wizard something that is doing automatic things directly in the xenon editor what we further need is that we need um, these bay types or actually in this case a library of bay types uh, which are always different utility to utility from TSO to TSO. And this wizard needs to understand how these look like. And then, as we saw before, we need an SCD file which uh, uses or which uh, has a fully configured substation section and an ID section. And this comes typically from a system configuration tool. In this case, it's Healings. And also from the previous slide, we understood that we need s a little bit more information and this information is stored in an Excel sheet, uh, which we call SignalList. Also the SCT uh, needs some additional information, um, also about the data points and so on, and optionally could be um, fed by other uh, ID configuration tools um, to provides the information that is then stored in the SCD. But now let's uh, have a look how this looks like in reality. What we see here is the Xenon editor with the loaded template project, which we call Saphir, in this case Saphir 2. And this template project has already some predefined variables, uh, which we need uh, for the usability of this project mainly. But uh, what we see, there are no real drivers that uh, are communicating to the outside. Um, so there is no IEC 61850 driver available. There are, of course, uh, several screens already there. Uh, and the screen where we want to put our content in is here, but this screen is empty. So what we do next is that we open our wizard. The wizard now looks into that project and loads some files. For instance, also the symbol library, which we didn't see yet, but which I will show you later. So I select the wizard 
and open it. Now the wizard looks into this active Xenon project, generates some XML files and imports them. So what the wizard did is it looked into the symbol library mainly and checked for symbols that start with boxx box. So for instance, box line feeder looks like this. So this is the line feeder itself with uh, an alarm enunciator, some measured values. So this is how the symbol looks like, for instance, for the line feeder. Now the wizard asks for two files. One is the Excel file and the other one is the SCD file. I want to show you the Excel file, which uh, we see here. So in the Excel file, we see the variable name, uh, how the uh, end customer likes uh, the variables to be called. And the main important thing here in this Excel file is the symbolic address, where we have the object reference for the particular attributes of uh, the variable. And uh, actually this is the key to come from the SCD file into this list and step further. For instance, uh, to find out the resource label, to find out the tag name, and to find out also the data type. The other file is the SCD file, which we see here. We have the SCD file with a substation section, with um, you know uh, voltage levels, and here we have also some base. And the base have x, y coordinates. Now I import the files, and the wizard has imported these two files. On the left side, I see the substation section, which the wizard found in the SCD file. So there is, um, there are two voltage levels, J and E, and in, uh, in the J voltage level it found um, four bays, one transformer bay with the different uh, switch gear names and uh, three line feeder bays. On the right side we see what the wizard found when it started uh, by looking into the symbol library of our template project. Here, for instance, it found this line feeder uh, symbol or the transformer symbol, which we see here. And here in the middle, the wizard tried to put things together. So what we see here directly is that we have this transformer bay connected with this transformer symbol. I would see that when I click on the transformer here and see the linking between the source of the symbol. So we have m put some you know, cake crumbs uh, into the symbol by using some, some special names and uh, the logical node classes in order to give the wizard the idea, okay, this would be typically a QB9, which you can find somewhere in the SCD file and would be based on an uh, XSWI logical node. Also here for the measured values, it would find in the substation section um, current transformer 1 and, uh, based and the data based on MMXU uh, logical node. And then it would try to find the object reference in the SCD file and go with this object reference into the Excel sheet, look that object reference up and if it finds it, it would then uh, give me the variable name which it finds in the column of the variable names. In this case, everything worked fine. Why is the wizard doing that automatically? It does that because the description of this bay matches with the description of the symbol. If we wouldn't have that, uh, because the description is not mandatory, so if I would to have 
to do that manually, for instance, I'm now deleting uh, line feeder four here. I could just use um, the line feeder here. So I just use this symbol, drag it here into my project and tell it, okay, you are line feeder number one from the SCD file and drag and drop it here. And now I merge them together as well. And we see also here the linking, it's not so many because the SCD file does not provide as many uh, options as the symbol has, but the few of them, they are, th are there. So the uh, circuit breaker and the disconnector are there at least and three measured values instead of the other line feeder here there we have more measured values because the SCD file uh, provides more information for this type of line feeder. Okay now you understand how um, the Excel sheet and the SCD file work together. Now it goes into the graphic part so I click on single line and here I select where the wizard shall put its graphics and there is a screen called single line diagram I select this one and the wizard puts the symbols in a way as it finds the XY coordinates um, in the substation section for the base um, however the nobody knows exactly how large my symbols are so that's the reason why they are not exactly um, mapped here but I can do that manually so I know okay logically they are sitting side by side and this one would somehow fit here so I give the wizard the idea okay where roughly to place the different symbols that's all for this part. Then the next part is the 61 50 driver configuration. And here uh, we see that the wizard already understood, okay, I will create one driver instance with these number of server connections and I will put these report control blocks to the different servers because maybe in this case I am going to have a redundant HMI server. So this is done automatically based on the information the wizard gets with um, the SCD file because the report control blocks are uh, configured there and uh, some parts are from the template project. Then the variable list again, there we see yeah, an overview of all the variables that are going to be created very soon. So that's that's the variables all starting with Saphir in this case. And then there are two optional parts in this wizard. Uh, we could create an, a gateway, but in this uh, showcase we don't have that. Uh, the same is for SNMP. So we're not going to create an SNMP uh, manager uh, to connect uh, to uh, the agents of the switches and stuff. We just step that over and we go to the summary and what we do here is just we click on create and wait until the wizard creates everything for us. I click on create and I switch over to the Xenon editor that we see there is work going on. So we see the wizard has placed the symbols into the screen which we have selected. Now we just try to put the symbols side by side so that they fit together and also that the automatic line coloring will work then. So we see that the wizard has placed some stuff into the screens. When we go into the driver section we see now there is a driver configured. I open the driver to see the configuration. So we see the connections, 10 connections um, if I go further into that, we see the IP address was selected because I want to connect uh, to a 61850 server running on my computer on the local host. We see also 
the report control blocks assignment we see um, the report control blocks which are used here so this is everything configured by the wizard great so the next step I would do now is that I start the runtime to see if everything works fine So the runtime started up and we see the output of the wizard. So we see the overview of our single line diagram. We can now zoom in to see the numbers better. The more we zoom in, um, so in the last uh, two levels also the alarm enunciators um, get into view. Uh, we see that there are the switch gear representation available. We see the measured values. We see that there are some measured values not available, uh, might uh, depend on the server. Um, we also might be able to control a switch gear. So I click on this uh, circuit breaker, can open the circuit breaker and it opens. I can also close it again. So also command processing or the control of the switch gear is simulated here. So this is what the wizard did for us. It uh, created a single line diagram which is fully functional and which has the correct connection uh, to the IEC 61850 servers. Beside this single line diagram, this uh, project uh, has much more. Uh, as I said, the template project uh, shall have all functionalities uh, you would need in a simple substation HMI. So it shows uh, the topology of my um, configuration. So where we have all these uh, different IEDs which we are simulating right now. I would also see an audit trail just for this part. Then I have an alarm list where we today we have no alarms. Um, another audit trail which uh, provides information about everything some uh, trends graph is available where we uh, don't have any trends available right now and the, the here there is a prepared section for the reports thanks for watching